Have you ever been on a Linux box and need to get onto Wi-Fi, but just don't have access to the graphical user interface? Well, this could be because you logged in via a remote shell or that the machine just isn't running a GUI. But whatever the reason is that is hindering you from connecting that machine to a wireless network, here's a way to get it working using just the command line. In this video, I will be using the Parrot OS Linux distro from Parrot Security to demonstrate how we do this. Let's take a look at the normal scenario where we have the Network Manager GUI running. The steps that we would take is, number one, make sure the appropriate drivers are loaded, and then look for those uh, Wi-Fi interfaces. On my machine, we can see that the two Wi-Fi interfaces are using the Intel 6 AX201 and then the MediaTek MT7612U chipsets. Step two is to scan for available Wi-Fi networks nearby. This is done automatically when you click on the network manager. You see here that we have a few different networks nearby, for example, Capital One 2022, uh, this Chrome case one, and then Marriott, Bonvoy, Guest, etc. Step three is to select which access point or network you wanna join. I'm gonna go ahead and select the Spectrum Setup-CF. Step four, is to choose which Wi-Fi adapter to connect with, as I have two to choose from. I'm gonna choose the Intel, which is my internal Wi-Fi. And then next, we're gonna enter the pre-share key or the password that is associated with the network we're trying to join. And here we can see that we have connected successfully to the Spectrum Setup-CF network using the Intel wireless card. And lastly, step five is to obtain an IP address so that the computer can access the network. With the network manager, this is done in the background, so nothing for us to do here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect from the network to set up for the next demo. Now, let's do the same steps, but using the command line instead of the GUI. I'm gonna bring up a terminal window by clicking on the icon here in the middle of the tray at the top of the screen. So step one is that we have to make sure the drivers are loaded for the Wi-Fi interfaces. So the first thing I'm gonna do is type ifconfig to view the enabled networks and available devices. So we see here that ifconfig returns with the LO interface and the interface named WLP0S20F3. LO is the default loopback interface, and then the WLP0 is the wireless interface. So while the ifconfig command gives us information from the layer three and layer two of the network model, things like the IP address and the MAC address, and then the packets transmitted and received and so forth, I would like to see some layer one information. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the iwconfig command so iwconfig returns with the radio information like the ESSID that we're connected to, the operating mode of the device, which is usually one of either master, managed, monitor, or ad hoc. And then we also see the associated access point if we are connected, the transmission power, etc. So at this point, it looks like we're not associated with the, any networks. Okay, step two we will scan for available Wi-Fi networks. To do this on the command line, we can type in the command sudo iwlist scan. This will tell us all of the different channels, frequencies, ESSIDs of everything that our Wi-Fi adapter can pick up on. But this is just a lot of detail, right? Uh, as you can see here, there's just way too much stuff that we don't really care about. So we can narrow this down by filtering out for the word ESSID. So I'm gonna go ahead and type this in again, sudo iwlist scan and pipe that to grep ESSID. And now what we see here is that we're only seeing the ESSIDs of everything that we scanned. There are a lot of access points which are all using the same SSID because some of these are on a meshed network. So let's filter down even more by piping that last output to the sort command with the unique flag set. So sudo iwlist scan, pipe that to grep ESSID, and then pipe that to sort-u. 
Now we see a short list of networks, basically Blue Monkey four and six dash Wi-Fi, and then the Marriott Bonvoy underscore guest networks. Step three, we're gonna select which access point or network we want to connect to. And in this case, we're gonna break this down into two steps. The first step is to create a file that contains the hashed password that we want to use as credentials to the network. And because we know that the network is using the WPA security protocol, we're going to use the WPA passphrase command to set up the configuration file. And this is useful if you are doing this persistently over and over again. All right, so the command is WPA underscore passphrase. Blue Monkey Forensic dash Wi Fi. And then secret 123456 is our password to this network of Blue Monkey Forensic dash Wi Fi. And then we're going to redirect all of that into WPA underscore supplicant dot CONF. So the two pieces of information we're going to pass to this program is the name of the network, right? Blue Monkey Forensic dash Wi Fi and then the password to that network, which is secret 123456. And when it's done, let's take a look at the contents of the file. We're gonna do a more of WPA underscore supplicant.conf. We see that it lists out the SSID of Blue Monkey Forensics dash Wi-Fi, and then the pre-share key in two lines. The first line is commented out, and it's the plain text of the password. And then the second line is the hashed version of that pre-shared key. So if this file were to be used uh, in a permanent file in the system, it would probably be a good idea to edit the file and delete the line that is the plain text, right, for security purposes, because the program doesn't need it. It's only for humans to kind of sort it out. Step four, we want to choose which Wi-Fi connector to connect with. So let's take a look at the output of iwconfig again. And I'm going to copy the name of that interface, WLP0, by highlighting it and then typing shift control c And now we're going to do sudo WPA underscore supplicant dash C to read the config file of WPA underscore supplicant dot conf dash I for the interface to use, which is WLP0 S20F3 dash capital B is that because we're gonna put the process in the background, otherwise we won't get our cursor back. And lastly, dash D for which driver to use. And we're gonna use the driver that's named NL8211. Once I hit enter, I get a whole bunch of output, which tells me that I have failed. Well, don't panic. This is because we still have the GUI version of Network Manager running. And so I can't use the command line version to control the Wi-Fi adapter because there's a conflict now. So all we need to do is stop Network Manager. Let's first verify that it is in fact running. I'm gonna type systemctl status network manager. And we see here that the service is in fact loaded and active. So let's go ahead and put a stop to that. We're gonna do sudo systemctl stop network manager. Now we can rerun the WPA supplicant command to connect to the desired network with the provided credential. So I'm gonna up arrow and then hit return. And this time we get feedback that we are successful with the WPA supplicant program. All right, so the last thing we need to do, which is step five, is we need to obtain an IP address so that the computer can access the network. Since we're connected to the network already, we can go ahead and execute the DH client command through the connected interface and ask for an IP from the DHCP server. So I'm gonna do sudo DH client WLP0 S20F3. And after a little short while, Linux comes back with the prompt and node feedback. So let's verify by pinging a website to make sure that we are active on the internet. So I'm gonna go ahead and ping kane-live.net. And we can see that ping is able to reach out successfully. So let's go ahead and check on iwconfig again to see what the radio information looks like now. 
And so here we can confirm that the ESS ID that we're connected to is Blue Monkey Forensics Wi Fi. We see that it is using a frequency of 2.437 gigahertz, which is channel 6. And then we also can see the MAC address of the access point. Uh, we see the signal level. Uh, here is negative 26 dBm, which means we're actually very, very close to this access point. So that's it. We are connected to Wi-Fi using the command line. As you have no doubt heard, the IF config tool has been deprecated since 2009, but it's clearly still in use. But let's go ahead and learn how to use some new tools to do what we did earlier in this video. This way, you will still know what to do in case you are on a system that doesn't have the old tools available. So step one is to make sure the drivers are loaded for the Wi-Fi interfaces. So instead of using IF config to view the enabled networks and available devices, I'm going to use the IP command. So I'm going to go IP and then address. So here we see that IP returns with the uh, loopback interface again, LO. And it's also got an Ethernet interface named ENX94 blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is new because I actually am using a different dongle uh, from when I was doing this earlier. And then we lastly see the wireless interface named WLP0S20F3. And just like IF config gives us information from uh, layer two and layer three of the network model, IP command also shows the MAC addresses and IP addresses and packets transmitted and received and so forth. And now let's take a look at layer one information. And instead of using the IW config command, we're going to use the IW command. So this time what we're going to do is IW dev for device and then name the device, which is WLP0S20F3. And lastly, what do we want? We want some info, so we'll type in info. So this returns with the radio information, again, like the MAC address, the operating mode of the device, the transmission power, etc. So at this point, looks like we're not associated with any networks. Step three, let's go ahead and scan for available networks. And so to do this on the command line, we can go ahead and type in sudo iw and then give it the interface, which is WLP0S20F3. And then the command we want is scan. So this will tell us all of the different channels, frequencies, ESSIDs of everything that our Wi-Fi adapter can pick up on. But again, this is just way too much detail, right? You can see here, it just got way more things than we actually know what to do with. And so we can narrow this down by filtering out for the word ESSID. And then we can also filter that down even more by piping that through the sort command with the unique flag set. So we're going to do sudo IW WLP0 S20F3 scan, piping that to grep ESSID, and then pipe that to sort dash U. So now we can see the list of networks, which is basically, again, Blue Monkey Forensics Wi-Fi and a few others. And this list might look a little bit different than what we saw earlier because I moved locations just for a change of scenery. Step three, we need to select which access point or network we want to connect to. And this time we're going to use the NMCLI command to make that connection. And NMCLI is basically a wrapper around WPA supplicant. So, you know, yet another way of doing similar things. So the command is NMCLI, Network Manager Command Line. And then we're specified device is the Wi-Fi device. And then we will tell it we want to connect to the access point called Blue Monkey Forensics dash Wi-Fi. And then lastly, we're going to use dash dash ask option because we want the program to ask us for the password. So after I press return, this will prompt us to type in the password, which I will do now. And so this is performing step four, which is entering the password. And then this is also performing step five in the background, which is obtaining the IP address. And we can test this out by pinging machine on the internet. So once again, I'm going to do ping dash C4, right, for four count, 
to cane-live.net. And we're able to see that ping is reaching out successfully. So let's go ahead and check on the IW command again to see what information on the radio device looks like now. I'm going to do IW dev WLP 0 S 20 F 3 info. So now we see the difference is that it has a MAC address for the access point. We can confirm that the SSID we are connected to is Blue Monkey Forensics dash Wi Fi and uh, we're connected to the frequency of 2.437 gigahertz which is channel 6 again and we see that the signal level is 22 dBm which once again means we're really really close to this access point. You may come across occasions where you need to use the Wi-Fi of a system and just can't use the GUI for reasons ranging from because you're trying to automate a process right so you can't uh, use the GUI or you want to transfer data over the Wi-Fi instead of the Ethernet. Well, enabling and using the Wi-Fi in your system is fairly straightforward when you mimic the steps that the GUI takes. So as a reminder, step one is to make sure that the drivers are loaded for the Wi-Fi interfaces. Step two, scan for the available networks. Step three, select which access point you want to connect to. Step four, enter the password or the credentials for that network. And step five, obtain an IP address. So here's a summary of the commands that we had looked at in this video, both the old commands and also the replacement newer commands. For more videos related to networking, see these videos here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.